Hi, my name is Christine Sharp. I'm a choir director. I currently teach eighth, eighth and ninth grade choir at a public school in Wisconsin. Recently, our choirs put up a video of them performing the major scale in a three-part round with a gigantic balloon. Um, this video has kind of gone, I don't know, semi-viral, I guess, with over 70,000 views. It's been really exciting for us and especially for my kids who now think they're famous. Um, but it's been really great just getting all the questions from choir directors everywhere. So I guess I just wanted to make this instructional video to just really demonstrate how it can be done and how it can be done in your choirs. There's a bit of planning that should go into this warm up before just busting out a giant balloon and then madness ensuing in your classes. Um, I start at the beginning of the year with my students learning the major scale using solfege hand signs. Um, we start with just unison, just teaching the hand signs, and then once they start to get that in unison, then I can break them up into a two-part round. And then eventually three or four parts, or depending on how large your group is, how many parts you want. Um, the second group will begin singing after the first group gets to the third scale degree, so they're moving up in thirds. Um, I also have an assignment for my eighth grade students because they're my, my new, my baby students. Um, they perform the major scales in a video by themselves. I know I'm super mean. Um, my school has one-to-one -one Chromebooks. So while some of the students do fight me about it at first, it's the first time that they've had to sing alone, many of them. Um, with a bit, bit of explaining how important it is to build their confidence, they do turn in this assignment. Um, it's a really great assignment to just get them more confident in their own ability. Um, there are lots of other solfege activities that I do to help build their skills before we use the balloon. Because my class sizes are so large, which is a blessing and a curse, I have 60 or 65 in each class. I usually put on these videos and then take attendance while these students are practicing their hand signs or singing. Um, there are some really great resources that are free to use on YouTube. I'll see if I can add them in a link somewhere. <laughs> this is new for me. I haven't really done this before. Um, the Singing School is one that we use a lot. It has a daily sight singing video, um, and you can see my students here singing and using their Kodai hand signs with it. Another great resource that I use all of the time is S-Cube. Shout out to Dale Duncan. He has a fabulous website and a great sight reading program with really fun activities for kids that I use all of the time. Um, our personal favorite is the Forbidden Pattern. So if you haven't checked him out, I highly suggest it, especially for middle school. He's great. Um, all of these solfege activities are really excellent to build your students' musicality. I think that sight reading is really important, but it has to be really fun. And music theory needs to be fun and engaging, especially for middle school and early high school students, just to keep them going. Um, okay, so one final test before we use the balloon is having them follow my conducting pattern uh, in two or three parts, however many you want. I try to mimic the way the balloon can be hit, either faster or slower patterns. Again, I would scaffold this, so start with just one part, then move on to two parts, or however many parts your choirs typically will sing. So I'll say like, okay, think about this one song that you're singing in a three-part split, those are your parts, that sort of thing. Um, so finally, it's time to bust out that balloon. Make sure that your students are not allergic to latex, that's really important these days. Um, these giant balloons, here they are, here's one, giant balloon. Um, it can be bought on Amazon. I got a whole pack for like 10 bucks or something. I'm not sure. They're 36 inches and they are <laughs> a pain to blow up. It takes like 10 minutes to blow this thing up. So if you have a wonderful overachieving student that you think can handle it, tell them it will really help with their breath support if they blow the entire thing up. Pro tip there. <laughs> um, the balloons last for me for weeks, but I live in the Midwest, so it's really low altitude. I hear that at a higher altitude, they don't last for long. So I can use the thing for like the whole quarter and it'll be great. Um, so before you start, be sure to go over some ground rules. Remind your students not to hit the balloon too hard. Watch out for weird ceiling objects, like I've got a projector that comes out of the ceiling. Um, make sure that the game goes smoothly by not like, you know, goofing around or hitting people in the head or whatever. Uh, takes a little bit of classroom management to get it going, especially at younger grades. 
always remind them to use good breath support. Just because we're singing with a big balloon doesn't mean you get to sing with poor tone quality, so make sure that they're still using open space and all of that stuff while they're singing. The rules. When the balloon is in the air, you must keep singing. That's really the breath control here, and that really gets them working on that. Uh, when the balloon gets hit, then they can move to the next scale degree. And then when you get all the way back down to low do, you just start over. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sa, fa, mi, re, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Do this in unison. Try it in two parts, then in three or four, depending on the size and ability of your groups. This is a fabulously engaging activity to do in the classroom, but I've also done it at choral retreats and festivals. It's a blast if you get 200 kids all together. You could even get two balloons out. Like it's, it's really a lot of fun. Um, so I currently teach eighth and ninth grade, but I've previously taught K-12. I've kind of done everything music wise. Um, I've used the balloon just in grades eight through 12. It works really great for secondary levels. Um, I could see it working with like a um, middle school or even upper elementary school level, assuming your kids and you have a really good rapport already. Classroom manage management is good and all that stuff. So once you do it, this is the fun part, once you do it in major, this can also be done with minor scales and even chromatic scales in rounds. I bust out the balloons several times throughout the school year and each time the students are so excited for it. Um, this exercise really does so much breath support, intonation and part singing, really watching the balloon to see when to move pitch, much like watching the teacher conduct an ictus. Um, solfege and music theory. I think most importantly, though, it is a great team building activity. It really makes the kids work together, have fun together. And I think especially at our, our middle school and early high school levels, fun is really important. So I hope this is something you find helpful and try it in your classroom soon. Thanks!